evening everybody. Welcome to True North RC headquarters and we're going to start bringing you a new video called Garage Talk. Um, I'd like to welcome Adam Moffat to the True North team. We're going to be working together yeah. on a lot of new projects coming up. Um, as you can see on the table here we've got two pretty much finished products. Uh, they're never really finished as you all know as <laughs> RC builders right? So it can, be, uh, it can be an ongoing battle or a rabbit hole as we like to call it. Absolutely. So go ahead, Adam. Say hi. No, nope. hi everybody. Uh, thanks, Chad. I'm pretty pumped and excited to be sitting here with uh, with you and in the RC garage. Um, you know, I think between the two of us, we've done quite a few builds together and tons. Uh, yeah, tons. tons yeah, we're, we're beyond the, the the one or two builds, so it's time we uh, started putting our heads together, go a little bit further, and uh, show some of the work that we put together. So well, it's nice for a lot of the new builders out there, um, and even some seasoned veterans. I mean, we we've, we've got some friends in this hobby that would blow your mind with what they built. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we've all saw some of the crazy stuff Kyle Joseph has done at the last Warsaw event that yep. we were at. Super scale. Um, but it gives everybody the opportunity to share ideas. So please comment like and share the video um, if you have any ideas for any of the builds that we show you guys on this video please share them with us we'd love to check them out uh, and hopefully we can give you guys some new ideas as well yeah absolutely no I, I would agree I think this is a great opportunity to just keep uh, everybody keep learning everybody keep doing yeah. new things and you know set the bar a little bit higher and yeah like you said we got people like Kyle out there who uh, who kind of set the bar here so we all try to jump to the next bar and then he sets the bar up here so it's it's a fun little game of cat and mouse but no more trophies for you yeah you're, you're done Kyle that's it we're coming for you <laughs> so uh, maybe we'll kick it off so what you got uh, what we got in front of us here uh, both Chad and I have been working on for quite a while and we uh, displayed both of them at the Warsaw event because it was time to roll them out but uh, we got a couple of Red Cat 6.4s uh, Red Cat 6.4 chassis that we've each taken a little bit different way um, do you want to kick it off first, Chad? Yeah, Talk sure. about your beast over here. I mean, we all kind of got enthralled with the, the, the Red Cat 64 when it came out. I mean, yeah. people have been working hard on their own chassis trying to make it articulate like a hydraulic car where Red Cat just threw it all in one RTR yeah. package. So I picked mine up, had to get one right from Paris Junction RC. I mean, they help us out with so many pieces and, and trucks that we pick up off of them. They're amazing family. Um, so I picked mine up. It was a stock body. I added a couple of Cheech and Chong figures and some details and then added a little bit of a, a trick with the smoke machine. I have it actually coming out of Chong's mouth, so it's kind of a, 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 a neat piece when it's running. Uh, there's also a Bluetooth speaker system in here that we offer at True North, and we can customize them to any way you want. But it adds a really neat effect that you'll see in a, in a, in a video shortly after this one. Um, the neat thing with this is I, I wanted the body to look authentic to the one out of the movie and I just did not have the time or, or energy to do it and I had Adam had bought the one for this one and it had the stock body on it and he calls me one day and says there's something in the trailer for you well I mean if you all know Adam that could mean something <laughs> scary because you, you just don't know what you're, you're going to get well, I walked in the trailer and there was this body all finished. Uh, I mean, such an amazing piece. Very, very, very scale to the real one. I mean, we've even got to the point, if you if you look in the mirror, you can kind of see Chong in a bikini there from the movie. Uh, so we ended up putting that together. I was quite shocked when I saw it. But we added from 3D Scaler, I believe. Three, yeah, 3D, 3D Scaler, scaler I believe. Um, the wheels. The hood ornament, uh, yeah. they did an amazing job on it, and then we added the metal chain steering wheel from Jervies, which I mean really completed this thing off. Uh, it, it's done, it's ready to roll, and it'll be at a lot of the shows that we're coming to. And uh, yeah, I, please let us know what you think about it. Yeah, it was a fun build too, for sure. Yeah, it was awesome. Hard to see in the video, we'll try to get a few close ups on it, but you know, we did the interior out as well with the purple and the, uh, the oh, blue yeah, fur yeah, yeah. everywhere, the, the, the dash balls, lights up, the dash lights up yeah. so. It's a pretty intense build. Um, there's even some adult rated accessories that uh, if you see it in person, make sure you look through the interior on. Yeah. And, and some of it's real. Yeah, <laughs> yep, some of it's real. So that was, that was it's a well done truck, or well done car I should say, not a truck, but. Uh, Speaking of truck. Yeah, so uh, um, what I have here, again, it's it's the Red Cat 6.4 platform. Um, as Chad said, I had bought uh, one of the, the 6.4s probably a day or two after Chad got his because yeah. we were down here playing with it in the garage, and it was like, wow. As um, soon as I got it, I knew what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to build a, a one-off blazer, and uh, that's kind of what we have in front of us here. So um, 
I don't even know where to start on this one. So you know what I want you to start on is the bumperettes. Yep. Because I've yet to see those on a square body. Yep. So it, it's it, you can see on the front of it, one of the things I started building and I said to Chad, I wanted it to be really authentic and really to the key. So I spent some time with some styrene and I uh, had to do a couple of uh, trial and error kind of situations. But what I came up with was the actual uh, bumper X for the, so cool. the front bumper, which kind of offsets it. Um, if you see them in real life, it, it's kind of one of those eye catching things. Yep. Um, so I decided from day one that I was going to build a red weathered out uh, low rider and uh, I was walking through Canadian Tire one day and I came across this baby blue, paint, baby blue paint and I was just kind of uh, thrown back by it and I thought well no the red is out and the baby blue is in so I did a, a full weathering effect on it uh, tried to fade it out and then added a whole bunch of uh, 3D accessories and some fun stuff uh, even under the hood one of the things that I'm very proud of which there's a couple of these floating around on the 6.4 chassis with some modifications but what makes mine stand out a few different ways is I do have a, a fully detailed so cool. uh, engine bay under there so we've got uh, this is the SSD engine cover that's yep. been decked out with all of the True North RC interior engine bay accessories the brake calipers the uh, the radiator uh, battery all of that kind of fun stuff so that was really neat to put in there um, if you're familiar with the Red Cat 6.4 chassis the way it articulates in the front is on a lever system so I had to do a lot of work with the motor to kind of tuck the lever system in uh, and kind of hide the levers so when you're looking at it you can still see them but uh, they're they're hidden and then going backwards I wanted to make sure I did the interior because I hadn't seen one of these built with an interior yet so Again, with the 6.4 chassis and the blazer body, the way they made together, all of the electronics and the servos that control the front suspension and steering happen to be right underneath the seats. Yep. So it was a, a little bit tricky, but I, I cut it all out, sat down with some styrene. I love building with styrene, and I managed to get a, a full drop interior that I think if you look at it, you probably can't tell that it's been, no, you, been you chopped can. up. There's a couple of things in the interior, though, like the... I absolutely love the, the, the dangling dice. Yep. <laughs> I mean, they, were, they were in so many cars back in the 80s. Yep. And you've got them on as your shifter. Yep, yeah, we got them so cool. the shifter, the door locks, all of the fun stuff. And that was kind of reminiscent of back when I was a teenager yep. and you were. We kind of all did that stuff with our with our pickups. dark blue. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the, the biggest thing that, uh, that that's going on with the, the blazer is, and I'll turn it around so we can get a better look at it, is... I wanted it to really stand out. So when Chad was showing me what he did with the Cheech and Chong car stereo, I said, well, I want a stereo, Chad, but I don't want a speaker box. And what Chad was able to come up with was a pretty unique system here. Um, hopefully you guys can see it there. If not, we'll get some better shots later. But ultimately, it's a Bluetooth-driven stereo system with not only one, two, three, four speakers, but we've also got four small tweeters. So we've got eight speaker stereo system. Um, did a fabulous job with the Bluetooth receiver to wire it in to make it look like it was part of the stereo system with the amplifiers and the batteries. And we did some minor detailing. I mean, you can go absolutely crazy with it. With the wiring and amps. Yeah, and just a little bit of detailing on the wiring and amps. But uh, all in, it was a super fun build. Um, every time I look at it, something new pops up and something well, I got, forgot uh, about. You've got the Traxxas taillights on here. We do, yep, yep. Like yep. So I was sitting there one day, I think you and I were, we, we, yep. we bought a pack and we were like, how can we make these work? And with a little bit of cutting and a little bit of uh, hoping and praying, we were able to get those. They look those so light. much better than the RC4. They do. Ones. So much crisper. Uh, the backup light is there. The lines are very nice. And it doesn't look like plastic. It looks like it's got that glass kind yep. of look yep. to it. So um, Inside the interior, there's a scale switch box. Yep. Now you've got to tell the story about that because it's actually <laughs> kind of funny. So yeah, I wanted to make sure there's a switch box in there because if you're a low rider guy or you built a low rider like we have in the past, you got to have a switch box in there. Um, so every year a group of us get together and uh, we do kind of a secret Saturday thing at Christmas. And I guess this year uh, one of our good friends, Vig, drew my name and uh, uh, he was humming and hawing about what he should do and how, how yeah, you know, yeah. and I think uh, Kyle, another one of our friends, hopped up and said, well, I know he's building the low rider and he was asking me about a switch box for it. And uh, Vig being a good guy that Vig is, he took it upon himself to 3D, de 3D design a switch box for me. And uh, um, he sent it on down for our little secret, or our, our secret uh, Santa event. And uh, lo and behold, I get here and I'm holding a, a pretty big box, probably about the same size as the <laughs> RC. And uh, 
usually we try to theme it so that your gift is RC related. And I thought, well, this is strange. And I opened it up and lo and behold, there was a, a switch box in there, but it was a, a full one-to-one -one size switch <laughs> box with one-to-one -one switches on it. And Vig had thought that uh, I was building another low rider truck, not an RC truck. So um, it, it was a pretty good joke. It was, it was pretty funny as yeah. we kind of ran through it. And I've still got the switch box Vig, so that will definitely follow me around for the next couple of years to the shows <laughs> and the events. And I'll laugh at it for a yep, while. Yep, we'll all get a good chuckle out of it. But uh, inspired me to my first uh, true 3D design item. I, I yeah. used Tinkercad after you guys kind of played me through, and I was able to come up with a little switch boxer in there as well. Um, what wheels have you got on this? So these are the Traxxas 1.9 um, Rally Rims. So, and then I used a, just a, a very generic uh, street race tire yep, to kind of yep. get that low profile look to it. I had, I don't know, same thing with the Cheech and Chong car. So many different rims and tires I was playing with. And at the end of the day, you know, a classic square body needs that classic rally. And I'm, I'm glad we went in that direction. It's such um, a cool piece. Yeah, it was a fun truck, and I guess one thing you can't really see through the video, and we'll try to show it later on, is it's wire front to back, so headlights, tail lights, uh, ground effects lights, no different yeah, than Cheech yeah. and Chong. Uh, we've got some lighting in the cab. We've got some lighting under the hood, so it, it, it lights up at nighttime. Um, all the batteries, again, they kind of tuck here, tuck there. Not a lot of room to, to hide them, but we well, managed to. You have to, when you start getting into the scale builds, uh, be it this type of build or even yeah. the, the trail trucks, you tend to have to go to a lot smaller battery. Yes. We'll, we'll use anything from, what are they, 1300s or something? 1300s, yeah. Or the, or, uh, the 1500s? Yep, 1500s. And you can kind of tuck those uh, anywhere. I mean, we've got some batteries that are smaller than a Tumi that we'll use to power the stereo systems yeah. or sometimes power a Bluetooth speaker if we can't hardwire it into the body itself. So just, just remember, when you're doing a lot of the scale builds, you don't have to stuff that big, giant 3S yeah. battery somewhere. You can always use a small battery because in reality, yeah. we're only driving these things for you know 15, 20 minutes at a time to, to exactly. make some fun at a show. So. Exactly, and you know when you get into lighting and you get into you want it to be drivable and lifting yeah. suspension and uh, stereo systems, you know you have multiple batteries. I think in this truck I've got oh some two of the wiring four hundred milliamps. Show you something. Uh, two four hundred milliamp three S's for the stereo, and I've got a drive battery and I've got a battery for the lighting. So again, like Chad said. You know, for, for just a, don't be, a, don't an be example, scared. some of the wiring we deal with, this is going to be a cop car that yep. we're working on here, and that's not even all of the lights yet. So believe me, there's a lot of times you want to hide a small battery somewhere. Absolutely. Um, battery and wiring tend to be, I think, what most people, well, even I was when I first started getting into chat, I was very intimidated by wiring and lighting. and. I think I spent a, a day so here your, with you. And then you made your puller truck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Made a made a puller truck, and the puller truck, I think, has 74 independent LEDs on it. You know, no doubt, because Chad sat down, taught me how to do soldering properly, how to run the wiring, and, you know, it, it's just a matter of jumping into it. But Never be afraid to try something new. Yeah. Because it, really, the possibilities are endless when you're building a custom RC. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Maybe we'll uh, we'll throw these on the turntable. We'll uh, give you guys an opportunity to see yep, a 3D Earth 360 degree look of them. And like we said, these will be at all the shows with us uh, this year, going into next year. So you want to take a gander? Feel free, jump on over, take a gander, and let us know what you think. Have a good one, right. guys. Hey guys.